Hello everyone, welcome to Molson Math. Today we will evaluate this rather unusual sum containing both the trigonometric and the hyperbolic functions that I found on the Facebook group Math Facts. Basically it's a bunch of Indian kids that just post random series and integrals and they challenge other people to do them. I have, unfortunately was not the first one to come out with the solution so I, so I didn't get credit for it but I decided to tell you guys since it's pretty cool. Okay, so we have the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of sine of 2n, the hyperbolic cosine function, which is called the cosh of 2n, over sine squared 2n plus sine h squared 2n, or sinh, however you want to pronounce it. And this series is unusual in a few ways. One, we have both the trigonometric and the hyperbolic functions. And we also have this mysterious 2 to the n here. Why is that there? Is, is, is that important? Would it work for other series, like, like uh, just the regular n, or if we had n squared, or something like that? What makes this 2 to the n so special? Well, we will see in the solution of why it's so special. We are also going to use this identity, which I will derive for you shortly in the solution. This actually makes the solution quite simple, straightforward. Basically, it says that sine h times cosh h, h over sine x. <laughs> this is just a math. Sine x cosh x over sine squared x plus sinh squared x is equal to sine x over cosh x minus cos x minus the same thing with x being replaced by 2x. So we have sine 2x over cosh 2x minus cos 2x. Now, if you have studied infinite series and sequences before, say in a calculus class, you can immediately see from this identity where it might be going. In fact, we want to use this identity, which I will prove for you shortly, to show that this sum actually telescopes. So now, the left-hand side of our expression is simply going to be sum and goes from zero to infinity of, okay. We just take what we have here and replace it with this. So we have sine of two to the n over cos two to the n minus cos two to the n minus the same thing here but with a factor of 2 out in front. So we have 2 times 2 to the n is equal to 2 to the n plus 1. This is the secret to why this works. We'll show this shortly. Okay, this becomes sine of 2n plus 1 over cosh of 2 to the n plus 1 minus cos of 2 to the n plus 1. And now, if you've studied the telescoping series before, you can immediately see that this is going to telescope. And I will write out a few terms so we can see which terms are left. So the first term here, n equals 0, it just becomes sine of 2 to the 0, which is 1, over cosh 1 minus cos 1. And we have second term here, the next power of 2 is 2, so it becomes sine 2 over cosh 2 minus cos 2. Okay, that's the first term. And n equals 1 term, well, we have sine of 2 here. We immediately see that that term is going to cancel over cosh 2 minus cos 2. And the next power of 2 sine of 4 over cosh 4 minus cos 4, and this pattern continues indefinitely. We see that this term cancels with this one, and we're going to assume that this term cancels with something else in here as well. So only the first term remains, which is sine 1 over cosh 1 minus cos 1. This is actually the answer that we seek. And it's pretty straightforward. Just the first value. So let's see why the 2 to the n sequence was important. Well, if we wanted to telescope like it did here, we would need a sequence satisfying a to the n plus 1 is equal to 2 
a to the n. That's the only way that this will work. Well, the only function that satisfies this is the exponential function up to a constant. Constant would also satisfy that. But the exponential function of base 2 is the most fundamental function that would satisfy this. That's the only reason why the 2 to the n is, is, is here. It, it, it looks unusual, but it's just the only sequence that satisfies this identity being telescoping. Okay, now that we've actually shown the result, if you don't want to see why this is true, you can feel free to stop the video. If you are curious, I'll show you some elements of the derivation, though it is pretty tedious and there's a lot of unusual identities going on. So if, if you want to stick around, you can. Otherwise, feel free to sign off. I'll see you next time. Okay. I'll be proving this here. Need some more space. Now, I warn you, if you do intend to follow me, it is pretty tedious. And although it is tedious, it allows you to derive some unusual identities, which I'm going to write down here for you. Okay. So I'm not going to derive these identities because that's even more tedious than what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to state them. We're going to need these identities here that I derived, and you can too. We're going to need the fact that sin squared x plus sine squared x is equal to cosh 2x minus cos 2x. And we're also going to need a more complicated identity that cosh, yes, it's pronounced cosh x. I keep seeing cos h in my head. I don't know why. It's pronounced cosh. I'm sorry. So we have cos h plus cos x is equal to, oh sorry, there is a one half out here in the front. This is a pretty important one half. There you go. One half. It's also one half here as well. Cosh 2x minus cos 2x over cosh x minus cos x. Well, how can I derive these identities if you if you ask? Well, you just have to use things that everyone knows, basically. You have to use that 1 is equal to sin squared x minus cosh squared x. Or look the other way around. <laughs> that would be funny if I wrote the wrong one. Yeah, it is the other, it is the other way around. Okay, here we go. And this is also equal to cosine squared x plus sine squared x. You would need the double angle formula, so you need to know that uh, sine 2x is equal to, equal to 2 sine x cos x. Sorry, I'm writing them messily because we're not going to use them. And cos 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Even writing down all the identities that you need takes a lot of time. I mean, God, it's just so tedious. So, obviously, the hard part of the, about this problem is not actually evaluating the sum, but it's showing that this stupid thing works. And you'll need other identities like this one. You'll need that cosh of 2x is actually equal to cosh squared x plus sine squared x. That should be pretty much all you need to prove these identities. If you want to do it, feel free. I won't hold it against you if you don't, though. It, it does it does take a bit. It's tedious. Okay, let's go on and use these bad boys, though. So, we want to show this here. We are actually going to start from the right-hand side, because it's easier and clearer what's going on. We're going to start from the right-hand side. So, sine x over cosh x minus cos x minus sine 2x minus cosh 2x minus cos 2x. Okay, this is the right-hand side of the expression that we had earlier. We're just going to basically 
by iterating over a common denominator, use these identities and some of the ones that we talked about before and see that it simplifies. Okay, let's leave this term alone and just look at this term. Well, if I multiply top and bottom by cosh 2x minus cos 2x, I will then obtain sine x. Yeah, what do I want? What do I want to be? Right, I want to multiply top and bottom. Sine x is going to be times this crap here. This term is actually divided by the thing that we multiplied. And this term I'm going to leave alone for now. And now we're going to use the identity that we conveniently wrote here, multiply this by 2 to get what we want. It is sine x factor of 2, and that becomes cosh x plus cos x minus sine 2x, which we're going to write now as 2 sine x cos x, since we had that written down a moment ago. This is still being divided by cos 2x minus cos 2x, right? Right? Yeah. Yep, we're doing well. Okay, so now we see that what we have before is sine 2x is actually going to cancel with this term here and leaving us with, note that this term is actually just going to be this identity up here. This is just 2 times sine h squared x plus sine squared x. So now we can cancel the 2's as well, and we get the answer that we seek. It's actually just sine x cosh x over sine h squared x plus sine squared x. If you want to call the sine h Feel free. I say it that way in my head, but it's really pronounced cinch. And yes, have we indeed derived what we wanted to? Yes, we have. Sine cos h over sine h squared plus sine squared x. Okay, it is proven. How are we going to use this ever again? I have no idea. But what I do know is I had to do this so that I could use it to prove the sum of the Indians wanted me to prove. Otherwise, I wouldn't have felt like I had really completed the problem. I felt like I would have cheated a bit. Oh, use this identity. It has to be true. Blah, blah, blah. No. This is why it's true. These are actually worse to derive. If you want to do it, feel free to go ahead. And if you have any other cool sums and integrals for me to do, definitely let me know. And thanks so much for liking and subscribing. I'll see you next time.